How's it going guys? Um, out at the cabin site again after a long absence up at the lodge. Only got a little break there where I can get away and uh, get back at this cabin building thing here. Bears have been by. Didn't really do much anything except tip my pails over and well, that one there I just tipped over but they went and ate anything I'd left in there again. Eat my coffee, eat my coffee meat, sugar, mustard. But anyway, so we're gonna get a couple more logs up here. Today, I just carried uh, some lumber in for the door, some of the roof boards. I'll just uh, bring a half a dozen in each time I come in and we'll uh, continue on. Alrighty, I'm gonna get a few of these on here and then we'll Turn the camera back on. See you in a bit. Are you guys huffing and puffing? Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. But I think two people would even be hard for me. Right, Mike? You know that for sure. And away they go. This is a beautiful camera. Do you guys want to say something? <laughs> I can't say anything right now. <laughs> yeah, too old or getting too old? Never too old. Yeah, uh, I'm too old. I too but I can old still hang on to a camera. I was too old for this 10 years ago, Steve. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> here's what we got yesterday. That's Watch out, man. This is the old man. Amazing how fast it goes when you got lots of help. Fine. Joe Steve. Never realized that before because I never we have had camera. help before. Okay. So we're here at the camp. Um, I'll show you real quick what I've got done so far. I just wanted to show you here how uh, getting a log up in place when you're by yourself is a little tricky. But here I finished, uh, I got a couple of more logs in. This one here I just got a trim down a little bit and then notch it in place or nail it in place I mean but when I put the window sills in you'll notice now for the upright of the sill I cut down a couple inches farther that is just for strength that's for you're gonna get no movement out of these at all you see here there and then what I do I take my level and just draw a line right here. I'll go down about an inch and a half or so. And then saw her off right perfectly level. Now I'm gonna show you how I do it when I do this next log, this last one, but I gotta get one more log up there before I can do it. And then, now I leave enough room on the uprights to put another two by four here or two by six and another one there and then the window will fit in there with a I got about three quarters of an inch of space there so I'll put a one by four on the inside of it and that'll be the the window stop but here what I wanted to show you was see this log here I'm gonna get it up into place on top of there now I know I've mentioned several times it's a little bit dangerous when it you start lifting you know 200 pound logs up 
over your head, but we'll uh, just take it easy and uh, get her done. Now I've got to put it with the big end over here. Can I see that end? Yeah. So I'll just slide it right in like so. over here. You see up in the corner there, I've got the two logs. So that's going to hold it in place while I get this end. The first order of business is getting that guy down. in between them two boards there you see now you just get this up there we go logs in place now I just got to roll it around to see what fits where oh to be 20 years old again or 30 or even 40. It used to be a lot easier back then. Now we just roll this log until we get the best fit possible. So we have to do a little trimming as we can. That's going to fit in there. Okay, I'll trim here, here, and then that end, and it should uh, slide right down into position. That end's nailed. This end, I'm just going to put this guy in here, hold it in place. So now you can see here, I've cut a level all the way. Now obviously I'm gonna have to do another one because it's too high on that end and over there. But you see when I pull this out, I mean those spots there that I trimmed will come in nice and tight. And I'll push that guy back and do another one. And uh, probably another one after that, and then I'll, uh, I gotta go pull the nail out there on the back, let it drop, put it back in so I can trim that again, because it's gonna be not trimmable. But anyways, I'll turn the camera off until I get that done and show you. And then I gotta, I think, let me see where we're at. Six feet right now, so I think 
probably one more log high. Because you gotta remember, these uh gotta be at least high enough so that the beams that are gonna run like this will clear my head by so much. I don't wanna have to duck, but you know, I'm not that tall, but I do wanna have at least six and a half feet of clearance. So one more log for sure, maybe two. But anyways, like I said, I'll shut her down until they get it finished. Okay, so I got the other log on there for this wall. This is the height I'm gonna, gonna want my window. So now, what I'm gonna do, I got this log in place already because it was about the perfect length. I figured I might as well just utilize it right like that. Got to square off the end a little bit, and then I'll go straight down from the uh, from there into the log for my two by six. Right. Now the window is 34 inches wide. So where's my tape measure? So I'm gonna have two two by sixes on each side. That one, then another one on the inside. Same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna have to, you know, add six inches. That's uh, four two by sixes. And then I'm gonna leave another inch of space so that I have room for the window to move in case it shifts a little bit. And uh, on the backing, I'll just put the one inch boards. So 34. So 41 inches. And I'll double check on the other window to make sure that's what I put. Mark my height, cut them off, put the other board across the top. Now this here, I'm not nailing these in yet because what I got to do here is trim it off level. I 
I'm going to trim down about well, at least an inch and a half. Okay, so that's level there. Remember, Norm, not a finishing carpenter here. Chainsaw carpenter. And then we take the big saw, and I'll run this. This thing we got to come out of there first, and this, and then now this is the tricky one to make sure you're level. Uprights in and cut the other one, uh, get in there. here is more of a guess than anything. You just try and line up your edge of your board with the same edge here. And here's our visitor, Mr. Pinebug. These are the guys here you don't want to have anything to do with. See these guys here? I don't know if you can see the chompers on them. But these are the ones that will absolutely eat your cabin whole if you don't uh, take the bark off these spruce and jack pine. 
they lay their they chew into the log, lay their eggs, and then the larvae just live under the bark and feed off your uh, your trees. So now I'll hammer this one in here. Just get an eye of idea of how where it's going to have to sit to be level. It's going to be right like so. Gosh, it's windy out here. Check the level on this one. Pretty good. So now all we do is measure this up here. Should be thirty eight and a half. That's how I put my windows in. That little notch on the bottom there, like I said on the other ones, that just stops any movement in this frame at all from moving around. You know, it's it's pretty solid that way. But like I said, that's just one out of a million ways of doing it. Alrighty. Okay, time to head home. Um, oh, starting to, well, not starting to, but just getting up there. Got a, I think this back wall is done now. It's, you know, it's close to seven feet. So, there's a, obviously one more log goes on there, which is the log that goes all the way across for the um, hold the roof joist on, and, uh, but that one's going to be 18 feet long. And these, uh, but from here, there will be the beam that goes right across to that pole there, like I said on the last video, and then right here again, and it will be uh, just notched down about two inches. So this beam's going to be eh, close to a foot over my head. That's all the room I need. It's not like I go jumping around too much. And then uh, got this one locked in here. Got that one up and level and going. Got to get one more window. I forgot to bring it back from the lodge with me. But anyhow, it's coming together. Alrighty, a couple hours so far, and uh, got a bunch more logs in place. I'm about ready to, uh, and I drag this roof pole back with me. And 
And anyhow, I've, I'm about ready to go around one of the windows. I just wanted to show something here and how you can avoid it if you want to do it that way. Now when you're putting your window frames in place first and then patching logs in between, which is, I do this because I don't have so much waste wood at the end. I can utilize the small pieces, but you see what happens every once in a while. Now here, you see the gap in there, but I have to leave it at that to get this semi-level. I'll just fill it in with foam, spray foam or uh, moss and sticks to hold in place, however I decide to do it. But you see now, because I put four logs there that are smaller, three bigger ones here, you see we got about a five inch gap there and less than an inch there. So now when I cut the spot out for the window frame on this next log which is right here, I can either cut it at an angle and have the log fairly steep and then work it back up or I can cut it out and then to keep this semi-level just trim off the bottom of this little piece here just so it's not a you know a major uh, angle on there but how to avoid that problem is don't put your window frame in first like I said if you don't worry if you're not worried about uh, you know wasting the wood and having a uh, peel in more wood than you need then just put these logs in from here from the door frame to there or right across if you want and then cut your door frame and your window out after um, that way you have all logs of approximately the same height so you're not going to have a gap like this but I don't mind filling spaces like that it's not as big a deal as it looks so anyways I'm going to show you how that goes and I'll, uh, I'll just set up and then get the camera back on. Alrighty, see you in a bit. Okay, so here I've got this log drawn out and what I'm going to do is cut down the notches for that line but you just got to make sure you're running 90 degrees to your your down cuts there
Yeah, by the way, I wouldn't, uh, until you've got some experience with a saw, don't try ripping wood like that because you got to be careful where the tip of your bar is all the time. You noticed when I was doing it a couple times it jerked back. But you got to be ready for that all the time. Like I know it's going to do that when I'm doing, when I'm ripping through a board like that. But that's how people end up with chainsaw cuts across their forehead or across here. You just, you want to be real careful with it. Okay, so that's, I just got to trim this one little piece here and then I'll put it up and see. Alrighty, let's see how she, she's going to fit in there now. And also when, well you'll see what I do now, when you're just trying to shave down a little bit on a cut like this, now you're not going to rip it no more. What you're going to do is so. See if I can't figure out why it's running like that.
Okay, so now you can see I've got a gap there, but it's fairly level. So I can fill that gap in real easy. And then I've got a, a level spot to work with for the next log that's going to go from there all the way across. And then once that's filled up, then it'll go all the way across to the far side. And uh, just solidify the wall into one piece. So I can deal with that. So I could trim that down more if I wanted, but then I'm gonna have a board or log that's at an angle like that. And that'll just cause even more problems after. But like I said, to fix that problem or fix having to deal with that problem, you just put solid logs all the way across and and then cut the pieces out afterwards. But it's not something that I wanted to do because I prefer to work with short logs when I'm usually in here by myself. And then I don't have to be carrying 14 foot, 16 foot logs all the time. I can you know, deal with four foot logs, one foot logs, you know, six foot logs, much easier. So I'm gonna nail this thing in there and uh, continue on. Alrighty. Okay, so we're gonna get this big uh, beam here in place. I just gotta see if I, how much I have to notch that back log and whatnot. So whenever you're doing stuff like this, just use any natural leverage that you can. Move it, but there'll always be some back breaking work first. Okay, so get her up on that little wall, put it through the window, and then up onto the back wall. Okay, we got her up in the back wall. Now I just gotta slide it in far enough so that I can get this in up on this wall. This is what we call bulwark. As in, I wish I had a bull to do it. Like the old saying goes, strong like fox, smart like bull, or something like that.
notch cut in the top log now. Oh, by the way, my big saw is in the shop. It was, there was something messed up with it. Anyways, he's taking a look at it, but couldn't get it done by the time I uh, came back out. <laughs> As luck would have it, I just get started and I run out of gas. Be right back. Okay, let's try this again. Deeper. Still more of that log sticking up than I wanted. Looks like about another inch deeper. So 
pretty good fit right there. And I think it might have remember me saying if you're doing notching on the like on the corner instead of this pig trough corner you know you don't want to do too much notching on the bottom log notch the top so it sits over top because that is a place where water can collect but that's if you're on the corners you know like that here it's going to be that's two feet under the eaves and there's no way uh, water's going to get in there at all so it's not a, a big deal. Okay that looks about perfect for level also. You see I've got an inch of space there that means right there I can drop that, I can notch into that log a flat spot so it sits nice and flush on that there pole and I will mark that off. I think I've already marked it but I guess I can just cut that mark, it doesn't really matter where it's going to sit so that's fine. I'll get that notch done and then we'll uh, get the camera back on here. But that's a not a bad fit right in there and like I said then the next log that goes across like this will be notched about the same and it'll sit on top of that and then that will all have that all locked in place and the next one will stick out past here that board there will get cut off and the next log will get passed there by oh, a foot and a half or so for the the side eaves or overhang, whatever you want to call it. See in a bit. I'm done for the day. It's two o'clock. I'm supposed to be home by three, so I'm going to be a little bit late. But I guess I have to got to drive down to Winnipeg tonight. So, anyways, I uh, got two more logs peeled down there. I'm thinking that's enough. I'm hoping so because they have a uh, you know the difference from two weeks ago when everybody was in here, all the guys and the, the boys peeled those trees for me. And uh, I mean, they were peeling great then still. And now two weeks later, they are tough. Boy, not quite as bad as they were last fall, where which was almost impossible. But you can see down here, see instead of those big chunks that I get off when I was doing them before, you can see now it's all just little little pieces of bark it took me to do those two logs I'm guessing well and that's just one tree but two logs it took me probably an hour and a half so it's uh, and they're not very big around so it's um getting pretty rough so I'm hoping I have enough if I don't I'll have to do another one when I come back in and in another two weeks it'll be even worse but I'll head into a uh, black spruce swamp up back up the trail and see if the the black spruce there in the water are peeling any better so these jack pine up on this ridge are drying right up